All right, so we have a before and after video about to happen here. This is before, and this is a mess. This is a mess. This is what happens after two weeks of not, not being able to find a minute to clean up after yourself. All right, now let's get some work done and we'll come back with an after. All right, this is our after video. And I'd say there's a really significant difference. Huge difference. And this, the job well done. Hey, kitty. Kitty cat does not know where everything's at. We have everything pulled out. All the machinery is out in the back. A lot of room in here when everything's moved out. folks Lester here and this is the first time we're taking a walk across the pasture now that we have some grass coming up uh, my my reactions to the grass is a little bit mixed now at this point we've had a total of eight inches of rain in the last month and so I know that we were uh, way behind on rain obviously you all know we went through a hundred and twenty eight days of no rain whatsoever and now to have gotten the eight inches all within one month is amazing uh we saw this grass begin to pop up after the first four inches a couple of weeks back and now it's just kind of at a standstill i i don't know what to think uh i'm gonna be honest and say i thought well, I'll just go ahead and tell you everything. At first, I thought we weren't gonna have any grass. I know it's very windy. We got a little bit of a cold front, even though it's not cold, a little bit of a front blowing through here. But uh, so at first, I did not think we would have any grass. And then when it began to pop up, I was excited to think that seed had just been laying there dormant that entire time. And that now it's all gonna start coming up but once you start walking around over here and looking closer, you can still see a whole lot of spots where there's nothing. And then even the grass that is coming up, it's not really coming up thick. It's thick enough to where you can see green. And I'll say that's a whole lot better than it was before. But like over here, I know you can see even on the camera what I'm seeing. Like there's almost nothing growing through here at all. You got some green over there, you got some green over here. But there are spots, and I mean there's some pretty large spots where it is very, very sparse. The growth, if any, is just very sparse where there's no there's no way animals could graze here at all. There's nothing to graze here. So in saying so, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that I don't think we're getting enough grass off of this pasture the way it is now to uh, sustain a total of nine cows. That includes the heifers and the calves. So I'm a little bit worried. I, I am. I'm a little bit worried. I was torn at first with just the fact that we have no grass 
Then I begin to get overwhelmed with uh, just the blessing of seeing green, thinking that, wow, we had grass after all. And now after eight inches of rain, plenty of sunshine, and it, we haven't had anything cool to where grass can't grow. I'm thinking, darn, <laughs> darn it. I'm gonna pick up that trash right there. I don't know how that, I don't even know what that is. I sure don't know how it got here. This looks like an old pool liner. That is an old pool liner. You know what this is from? You know what this is from? That's when a couple of years ago, Jamie put out a little mini kid pool for the uh, animals here in the woods to drink out of during last year's drought. And uh, I'm guessing that when Leo and his crew came by and did all the clearing, that pool was still out here and they rolled it up. But uh, no, you can see for yourselves, my friends, this is what we're looking at. Now, I did already put out my seed just this past weekend, less than a week ago, for my winter grass. And we will hope that it will start popping up, but it won't come up until the soil temperatures get quite a bit cooler. So, I have more to tell you about grass and the science behind it, but let me go ahead and take a break for a second, get my breath, get my thoughts, and then we'll jump back on it. Okay, so you have a lot to do with your type of soil, but you also have a lot to do with your soil temperatures. And so until you get temperatures into the 50s and 60s every day, you're not gonna have any winter grass come up. That winter grass thrives in cool temperatures. It's been formulated to, to, to not only germinate but also grow when your temperatures are below a certain temperature. <laughs> and we've not had those temperatures yet. Secondly, of course, it needs enough water to begin that you know process of germination. But then here comes the hard part. Does my soil have enough nutrients to sustain it and keep it alive once it does come up. Same thing we're asking about all of this. Now, we already know that after the hydro seeders, you know, left out of here, and we kind of took a couple of laps around, we saw spots that looked like volcanic ash. And I can't say there's any nutrition in that at all. But guys, I've seen people grow plants in nothing more than just a water container. You have your sun, you have your water, and I think that the soil, all it does is provides a little bit of extra nutrition. If that's the case, if that's the case, would it be unwise for me to go get some fertilizer and fertilize this? Because even if the soil is not providing the nutrition, the fertilizer will. We're getting plenty of rain, we're getting beautiful sun, I, that's a question. That's a question I would love to have answered. Now, the only problem is you're not going to find any of the large commercial fertilizers, those big trucks and buggies that we used to rent. Those are not available in our area. And uh, that's because of the war with Ukraine, supposedly. It has really limited how much fertilizer we get. Which, isn't that kind of weird? Don't you think that if you were a country, if you were a, a leader of a country and you knew how dependent your country was on the crops it produces, especially in those Midwestern states, and to produce those crops, you had to have fertilizer. Yet, your country does not produce fertilizer. Instead, you have to import fertilizers from other countries. Is there something not wrong with that picture? Because now that our country is unable, unable to import fertilizers because of the war in Ukraine, now we have no fertilizers. So a lot of folks are having to go without fertilizers. And uh, I'm only trying to sustain enough grass to 
you know, provide sustenance for nine cows and heifers. Not feed a country or feed the world. So I'm not trying to get political here. I mean, this has nothing to do with politics. This is having to do with common sense. So ask yourself this, this question. Forget, oh, I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. Forget all that. Who cares? Where is the fertilizer and how do we get it? And no matter what side of the party you're on, the answer is the same. Well, fertilizers come out of the Ukraine. That's where we always import it from. And then with the war in Ukraine, we're not able to import fertilizers right now. So that means that all of these countries or all of these states, all of these farmers, all of the world supply that depends on this. Oh boy, we got a visitor. I'll have to get right back with y'all. Just give me a second here. Oh, she's eating. Hey, sweet girl. Oh, my word. Oh, I love this. You're I cannot believe Hey, what is your name? I'm Beth. Beth knows every animal. She knows every yeah. single one of them. Every them. darn one of them she Can knows. Now that's the hard one over there. You got Tex. Tex is easy. <laughs> now you got now the hard part because I get confused that's all the time. Um, um, Waylon Santor. You are exactly right. Yay for you, Beth. Oh, Come on, let's walk on up and let's uh, go visit some other animals. How about it? My sweet girl. You're my She's sweet an girl. angel, ain't she? Word. This is just absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. <laughs> she said, you laugh. Your laugh is the same as it is on the videos. I'm like, well, I'm just a normal guy, lady. I'm a normal guy. No, you're not. No, we're Danny and... Uh, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Oh, she is just not, rushing they in. They don't eat with them? They do, I do not let Danny and Ruby eat here because they'll be mean to them. They so haven't we're gonna, got made that transition yeah, yet. Yeah, they can graze, but they're not going to be around during feed time. I'll show you. <laughs> All right, so okay. Miss Beth not, she's not, she's and like, Jamie... Be we're gonna take one of our kitties okay Yay. and they're taking one of the this is one of the uh tuxedo kitties the tuxedo babe i know it's tuxedo and so we're i'm just getting a video it's not a still shot miss beth you're oh, holding you're holding a smile for as long as you can <laughs> and i'm on a video here <laughs> you're posing okay. and just posing and posing that's great oh, ladies yeah. thank y'all so much we're again. blessed oh, blessed to meet you She's just oh, all right so now we are down to three we have this Beautiful, all black kitty who we think is going to be leaving on uh, Sunday. We're pretty certain that uh, this one here is going on Sunday. We have one tuxedo kitty. Sweetie, kitty, 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 kitty. Uh, by the way, they're all females. We have one tuxedo kitty who no one seems to want this little girl. And that's the saddest thing yet because she's a great climber. Look, she likes to climb. Show everybody, show everybody how great you can climb. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. And then, Stella, you're scaring her. Stella, we have this last little tiger stripe kitty who no one ever, yeah. Babe, no one wants, to, uh, did you jump out of that tree? Nobody wants this little tiger stripe kitty and we don't know why because she's adorable. She's the cutest thing of all time. <laughs> oh, look, babe. She goes, take me home. Someone take me home. I know, he's beautiful. Don't let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that.